All right, what's up guys? I got the exhaust video done earlier. Um, so I was looking back through the GoPro footage. Apparently it was messing up on the earlier ride. I'm hoping that it doesn't do it on this ride. I don't know why it was. If it was the heat or something, I don't know. That's annoying though, because it's a freaking GoPro Hero 10 Black. The newest camera and it's messing up. But, I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's a little bit cooler now. So, at least it feels like it. But, I am loving this bike, you guys. Um, it is just a phenomenal ride. And Robert, I believe his business name is, uh, his business or company name is Strictly Two Motorsports. Um, he's been great. Letting me keep the bike overnight. Um, extended it through rider share. So, that's awesome. But, basically, just going to be summing up the ride. And, as usual, on a bike that's new to the channel, I will be posting the specs for it in the beginning of the video. So, at this point, you've probably already seen that. Um, the one thing I will say this bike needs is a... Uh, it needs a exhaust. This stock exhaust is doesn't do much for me um, but the thing about this versus the FTR I'd say honestly this bikes pretty comfortable and the exhaust or sorry not the the and the weight of the bike versus the FTR this is a far lighter bike than the FTR so it's just a super nimble bike and fun to ride I love it um, this might be a bike that I would consider getting in the future so it I think it definitely gives off like a MT-09 feel just like in torque and in horsepower so it's at a bit of a price up but still comes in cheaper than the FTR so I think it's a great bike for the price I, I just I really hope that my footage is not messing up this time and that it'll be all right because I want you guys to be able to enjoy this and I know the the footage that I was watching most of it was all right but some of it was real janky so just bear with me on that not really anything i can do about it it's a rental too so it's not like i can just retake the video for free so this bike is fun I love it guys like I absolutely love this bike first time being on a Ducati hopefully it's not the last hopefully I'll get to buy another one or something rent a different one because this is this is a blast um, and I'm not sure about all I know they have the Panigale uh, Super Leggera um, I'm not sure which ones of theirs are uprights I mean obviously the monster is an upright so this is my kind of bike I like an upright bike um, I might review some leaned over bikes for you guys but 
they're just not my cup of tea especially with me being my size Same guy my size, I should probably be on one of those Harleys, but <laughs> those things are expensive. I'd love to be on an Indian Challenger, but I'd also need to have me one of these style bikes too. I say I haven't been able to figure out this mirror the entire time I've had this bike. I don't know why it's so much higher. My guess is you have to adjust the brake lever. It's kind of dumb. I don't know why they would make a mirror like that. I can't get enough of that quick shifter. The quick shifter is sick. It's just rain, rain, rain. Man, I love that. Yeah, this bike coasts through the wind pretty good. It, it's pretty windy out, but I'm not getting pushed around too bad. Obviously, you get a ton of wind noise because it's a naked bike. But honestly, like a, a, a Harley or something like that, if you don't have one of those adjustable windshields that you can raise way up, if that windshield's not in the right spot and you have a, a full, full uh, helmet like I do, it's just going to buffet the crap out of your head and you're going to have a bad time. Like, it's not enjoyable cruising down the highway and having the wind jerk your head around. And at least that's something that doesn't happen on a bike like this. You do have to hold your, like, kind of use, but it's not jerking it back and forth. So. This is just such an enjoyable bike to ride though, guys. It just is so nimble, easy to handle. I, I want one, like, it is awesome. I'm going to stop the video here for now and I will come back uh, once I have gotten into some curves because most of the way from here to the meet is just going to be this highway driving like this. Um, I'll give you my thoughts on it first. Uh, it's pretty good for a highway bike, not going to lie. No problem keeping up, obviously, I, but it, I'm just coming from a rebel. It's something I gotta point out because the Rebel, if I was on it right now, with how windy it is, I'd be struggling right now. Our highways in Indiana are just like wind tunnels. That's why when I'm on the Rebel, I try to stay on back roads and keep off of this stuff because it just doesn't handle it well. It's a bad bike for this kind of stuff. You can just, I mean, you'll get wore out after a while of doing this on this bike just because of the wind but it does it just fine. But yeah, so I'm gonna stop the video here for now. All right guys, we are back. Nice being in the shade finally. But also, I did figure out how to adjust. So you can go through and adjust exactly how the bike behaves in each individual. I mean, you could set them all to behave the exact same if you really wanted to, but so you can change it for each program. Uh, 
I did lower the wheelie control to one, ABS and traction control to two, engine is on high. I w I, if it was my own bike, I would do more than that, but it's not my bike, so I'm not going to. And honestly, it's crazy enough as it is. So, I'm happy with it where it's at for a rental. Um, but I definitely wanted to be able to change it and see how it reacted. Wheelie control definitely makes a difference. I did not expect this bike to lift up a 300 pound rider as like myself the way it does. I have not turned off wheelie control, but I have no doubt it would pull in first and maybe second it would pull me up off the ground. Because in first with wheelie control set to one, it was it was yanking that front tire up and I'm sure if the wheelie control wasn't where it's at, it would pull it up even more. This thing is torquey. But it is very fun, so and that's the difference between a bike like this and a inline four motorcycle. They're, they're both very fun, but the the V twins and the in the, the inline threes and the P twins, they're much more playful, much more usable power for the street. Um, an inline, a, a leader inline four is really just to go real fast at speeds above like 60, which is where a lot of speed limits stop. So it's not as useful unless you like. Uh, I mean, even this bike will do well above the speed limit in, in the blink of an eye, almost like. It's insane, but it's not its not as crazy. It's not gonna be you're doing 150 in the blink of an eye. It's gonna be you're doing 80 to 100 in the blink of an eye. So I like it better for that reason that it's not so ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, I, it's, leader bikes are still cool. I still like riding them. I miss my FZ1 and it's, it's fun to, to ride that kind of bike, but, oh geez, I'm running out of gas. Let's hope we make it there, or at least to a gas station. I know I'm not far from Peru, so. But yeah, I am still, and, this I th I have rode this more today than I have my Rebel a lot of days, and I am still more comfortable on it. The only thing that's less comfortable, so the seat is much more comfortable. The only thing that's less comfortable is my legs. My my knees are hurting where I have them bent, but that's about it. It is, I mean, it's so nice, like, uh, how nice this bike is for $12,000 is just incredible. Um, especially after coming from the FTR. The FTR was awesome. But I don't think it was this awesome for, and it's more expensive, so... I think Indian needs to figure, like keep working on their bike, and they they're having the same problem. And this is why I say Indian and Harley are too expensive. Ducati is one of the greatest mo motorcycle manufacturers in the world, and they can outprice you with a better motorcycle than both of you. That's the problem. I mean, I guess Harley doesn't really have anything to compare. 
but we both know they'd probably even be more expensive than Indian. Indian, they're smoking on their prices too. So that's really something motorcycle manufacturers need to get, American motorcycle manufacturers need to get figured out. And you don't even notice when you're accelerating on this thing. You just look down and you're going faster than you were. And that's a, lo a lot of that's because of the exhaust, but this throttle is way more responsive than the throttle on my Rebel. And that is because of that drive-by wire. People don't like drive-by wire, but it's better than, thro than a throttle cable because it just is. I mean, this is way more responsive than the throttle on my Rebel. my legs that's another thing though that's insane on the Ducati is the brakes I've never been on a bike that stops like this thing brakes are absolutely insane Some other bikers finally. They're on real bikes. He's like, does this stuff got to blow off my head? For real, this is some insane wind right now.
helmet in the shape of a baseball cap. Alright you guys, it is the morning, it's time for the bike to go back, squeeze through there. Anyways guys, so it is time for the bike to go back. It is still pretty nice out for how early it is. Um, I have put nearly 200 miles on this motorcycle by the time it makes it back to its owner. Robert Strictly Two Motorsports on Rider Share. I have had an amazing time on this motorcycle. Um, one of my favorite motorcycles I have been on. Um, and as far as like who should buy this thing. Um, it's a bit aggressive, um, but I think with the, with the controls and the way you can set the bike, you could make it pretty manageable. And if you're struggling with the clutch, the quick shifter is pretty nice. So I think, <clears throat> I think, uh, but the the one thing about the quick shifter is it is pretty aggressive so when you're kicking it into the next gear or down a gear it's not as smooth as the clutch so that might be something to look out for if you're thinking like that that you can just use the quick shifter and not have to worry about the clutch as much um but i think a newer person could ride it um just depends on the person it's not the craziest bike I ever read rode but I also haven't turned off the wheelie like everything to see exact like what it's absolutely like without anything on but I think that's part of the thing is you can leave you can leave that stuff all the way on you can turn the engine on low I mean so it's just you could ride it as a new rider and be and then just continue working your way through the settings to when you're comfortable um, and I think as long as you have respect for that that you'll be fine on it and it's super lightweight and easy to ride so 
Yeah, I think a, I think a, a lot of different riders can buy this thing. Do you have the money for it? It's not the cheapest motorcycle out there. It's not the most expensive motorcycle out there. So, but I absolutely have loved my 200 miles that I've put on it. Um, for me, the hardest thing about riding it is my knees really hurt. Um, everything else, though, I feel fine. Or feels just about the same as it would on a cruiser motorcycle anyways. Uh, and I did ride it at nighttime. It's the headlight is pretty good. Um, one of the better ones I've used on a motorcycle from the factory, but a lot of new headlights are getting to be pretty good now that people are companies are starting to use LEDs and whatnot. Um, and I think that's great. Guy over there is giving me a wave. See how much farther I make it until the gas light comes on. This will be my second time filling it up, and I think the first tank was about eleven dollars. Doesn't get, I think it gets about half of what the uh, Rebel does as far as MPG. A little disappointing. I think they could do better on the MPG. Considering the MT09, I think it's like. 45 and I think the MT-07 gets like I don't know like 50 I know the MT-10 gets about the same as this but the MT-10 makes like 150 horsepower maybe more now that was, that was, that was back when my, I had an FZ-1 it was like 150 so the MT-10 now probably makes 160, 170 beautiful morning I really hope my um, I haven't checked it again but I really hope my camera isn't still messing up hopefully it was just heat it's going to make it difficult to uh record in the summer though I don't know what is gonna happen with that maybe GoPro is, uh, knows there's something wrong with them and that's why they sell them so cheap
A lot less windy today. Much nicer ride. And don't get me wrong though guys, this thing, this thing is fast. Like, I'd say up to a certain mile per hour, you're probably just as fast as a leader bike or like in comparison to my FZ1 up to a certain point it's just as quick as that FZ1 was I mean obviously I don't think it can reach the top same top speed but up to a certain point that torque absolutely would demolish it so this is still a very quick and very fun bike very easy to ride honestly super lightweight I think the Aprilia RS 660 weighs like 403 pounds and I think this bike weighs a little bit more but they have like Cause it's 366 dry and I don't know what fluids weigh but I'm sure it brings I don't I don't get why they won't announce their wet weight but I'm sure it's over that 403 that the RS 660 weighs the RS 660 is impressive though making a hundred horsepower out of that 660 lightweight almost as much power as this less torquey but I'm going to be trying that one out next, his RS660. Um, and this, this screen is, uh, I love the screen. Like, it's super nice, automatically switches when it comes to nighttime. Uh, I think your headlight's automatic too. So uh, the, what the screen does when it goes to nighttime is it goes to a dark mode. And you can select if you want one all the time, but I like how it switches from light to dark. I'm sure when the sun's fully shining on this, the white is better. Um, this is really nice tech packed into a bike at this price point. And the screen seems pretty responsive. Um, I think I've noticed the speed like just skipping uh, way up, way ahead because it can't keep up. So I wish that was a little bit more responsive. But for the most part it does alright. Um, And it can be a little, well, I don't have an owner's manual though, but it can be a little bit tricky figuring out the menu at first, but I got used to it. So this, this scroll button controls, you can look at your range, your trip, your, uh, how much uh, gas you've consumed, like uh, miles per gallon, uh, your average speed, um, trip times. Uh, this is your um, instant MPG. It says I'm getting 50 MPG right now. Uh, that's kind of hard to believe, but maybe. And then you can look at your total miles, and then you hold the scroll wheel up to start changing. So you can go to a lap timer, or oh, that's cool. You can go to a DPL, which I don't know what that means. Yeah, it DPL. No idea what that does. I'm hitting the button. Nothing. Um, setting menu. Although I don't think I can use the setting menu right now either. 
Yeah, no, I can't. So I would have to probably be stopped to look at what the DPL is. But the setting menu is where you change the setting for a lot of stuff. I mean, obviously. But then that's also where you go into to uh, look at your uh, or change your mode settings, like for for sport, touring, and urban. Um, and then you just hold the scroll wheel back down to or scroll button, whatever you want to call it, to go back down to look at your different numbers and averages. And then you got your temperature, you got your time, you have your air temperature outside. Uh, and then it says automatic headlight, I think is what that stands for. And then you have your gas gauge and then your RPM, um, your speed, your gear. Every bike should come with a gear. Like, it can't cost them that much more to put a gauge like this on their bike. Every bike should have this. Doesn't necessarily have to have all the modes, but every bike should have a gauge like this. That's the worst thing on the Rebel, is that it doesn't have the rev indicator. Uh, they, at least they did put a gear indicator, but I mean, you really don't need a gear. I mean, but it is nice to have. So, but I would rather have an RPM gauge than a gear indicator. So, uh, the the eleven hundred the eleven hundreds gauge should have just been on all the bikes. I know maybe they're trying to make it have a more premium feel. I don't care. It should have been on all of them. The thing that should make the bike stand out is the engine difference, and it's obviously a bigger bike, more premium bike. That's just given. So they should have put that gauge on all of them. There we are, low fuel, 45 miles left. So when you get low fuel, instead of showing you a gauge, it now shows you how much range you have left, which is really nice. I'm trying to give it back to them with full fuel. So I'm trying to just fill up once on the way there. Um, and I should have plenty of range to do that. I've only got about 13 miles left. And it's saying I have 43 miles of range left. So that should be plenty. This is a really nice ride this morning. Because uh, it is very low wind. And yesterday it was blowing me all over the place. So this is like... This is probably the best ride I had all year. Even though it's not as warm. It's still high 60s. So that's still pretty good. And guys, as long as this bike isn't sitting still... This thing stays really cool, like 165 for the temperature. So temperatures stay really nice on this engine. If you stop it, yeah, you're gonna see 205, 210 on the temperature gauge. And the fans will kick on and it'll be loud. But if you're riding, nah, it stays pretty good temps. That is very good stopping power on this thing. I didn't even have to try, honestly. And it still stopped like a champ. So things, everything on this bike is just blows me away at how much these things cost. And that quick shifter, I mean, dude, is so much fun. It's so hard to get over it. Like, 
I'm going to be big sad getting back on that Rebel, not having a quick shifter, being slow. If you guys have a Rebel, just don't ride a different bike because it's going to be bad. That's, uh, that was a pretty decent bump. I, and I've hit a few decent bumps on this thing. The suspension, uh, like, I'd say probably like an eight and a half out of ten. I've never been on like a crazy suspension bike. And I don't know exactly what kind of suspension this has. But uh, if I had to give... So compared to the Rebel, I'd give the Rebel suspension like a 5 out of 10. Like, it's just passable. This is, this feels really good. It soaks up bumps really good. I'd give the FTR an 8 or an 8.5 out of 10 as well. Same for their, their, their baggers, I'd say. I'd give those an 8. But the Rebel is just it's just piss poor suspension I don't know if it's just because they designed it for small people but you should like have more people in mind when you're making your product From stoplight to stoplight, this is a super fun motorcycle. Like, it is so quick once you get, like, even off the line, it's so fast than a lot of motorcycles. I'm not the greatest, like, at launching a bike or anything like that. But once you get moving and shifting through those gears, it is so fast because you can just pull it wide open, quick shift, quick shift through all the gears or through a few of them anyways, if you go through all of them, you're going to be going pretty fast. So probably through, I think I do it through like third or fourth usually. So, and I think I short shift a lot. If you completely rev out every gear and you're in fourth, you're still going pretty fast, so. Alright guys, it's all fueled up. Only have about seven miles left to his house. Sadly, the ride's coming to an end. I'm going to miss this thing. And there you see, so we are at 210 degrees now. And the fans have kicked on to blowing hot air at me. On a hot day, a really hot day. That would not be fun when those kick on. They're the radiator is huge. There's it blows air straight back at you. But it's only while you're sitting still. So as long as you're not in stop and go traffic, it's not too bad. You can see it's still dropping there. It's kind of crazy how quickly that number will go up and down. The intake noise on this bike is just so satisfying. If it just had the exhaust to match it, I think it'd be perfect. The, the intake sounds super cool. 